Whoa. That actually got me a little bit. <laughs> hey, what's going on? It's your boy Sintel with the Intel, and we are getting ready to do another reaction review for the Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 4. If you haven't seen episodes one through three, don't worry, the links will be in the descriptions, and you can catch up that way. Now, this is going to be chopped up into middle, little tiny bite-sized pieces due to copyright restrictions, but you'll still be able to get the gist and enjoy some of the dialogue regarding what we just saw at the end. And if you like what you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscription button and click the bell icon so that you can get up-to-date notifications anytime we drop some new content just like this. You know, we can watch this and hang out and kick it like, you know, we chums. Grab my arm, grab my arm, we lock in together and get this Bubba Fett on. <laughs> I don't know what that means, uh, but it works. Hey, so with that being said, yo, let's go ahead and get this bad boy rolled. I hope they just like have just one shot of this and that he didn't have to hop into that submerged water, you know, every single episode. That would suck. Him and this slow banta boy be killing me. I don't understand how you get anywhere. Now, you see how Jabba got, like, crew and tons of people? Kind of helps to, you know, get those exploits actually working when you have people that can get the job done. It's just you and your Bonta, man. Not today, old girl. That's a girl? Still too many guards. I, I said that like I was surprised. Like, there's any distinguishing features on a Bonta that can determine sexuality. <laughs> Yeah, like, don't hurry, because, you know, <laughs> it's only a raging battle probably going on. Ah. So this should be interesting. We get the story of how they met. Okay, that's good. The Gathering Storm. Back with these cyberpunk kids. This woman is about to die. Hmm. Dang. They're giving her like some big mods, huh? You think Luke Skywalker went to a place like this to get his arm done? No, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> they actually showed the scene where he got his hand cut. I mean, uh, modded. I don't think I ever realized that she was bionicle or cyborgish. Take the black melon. It will help you recover. For a bad guy, he does a lot of good things. Who are you? I am Boba Fett. Boba is dead. Hmm. I was left for dead on the sands of Tatooine. I was rescued by the sand people. They took me and treated me as one of their own. I mean, you had to earn it, but you ain't lying. Help me recover my fire spray gunship. Where is it? Jabba the Hutt's palace. <laughs> She's like, work. If I help you, my debt is paid. If that is what you wish. That's right, because we'll get there like next week. I'm not going to let it go. I know what you're thinking. Let it go, man. I can't. I can't let it go. It walks five miles an hour. <laughs> I love how they never let go of these terrible resolution scopes. Like we can do intergalactic travel, but we just can't get a clear picture through a scope in the Star Wars universe. I hope they never change that. It's, it's so Star Wars. I'm tired of working for idiots who are going to get me killed. <laughs> Here she is. 
Ah. You about to go grab slave one, yes. Ah, nothing like a stealth mission. Get your butt back in the stew. I don't think it was a rat or suggestion. Oh. He's like, listen, dude, all I do is make food. Chill out. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Is that the rat catcher? Just clunk him on the head one time. <laughs> I'll watch the door. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> you know who I am? <laughs> I am Boba Fett. Dang, he turned himself off. <laughs> Good old Slave One. Nice bit of nostalgia. This is my daddy's ride. Mm. Whoa. She's running, ladies and gentlemen. Damn it. Ah! It's the sand skimmer ship. Dang, big boy. You got done up real quick. That's a tough ship. <laughs> nice. Okay. Slave one is free. How's the ship? She's in good shape. Just a little rusty. They're good mechanics in Moss Eisley. We're not going to Moss Eisley. Mm-hmm. Now your debt is paid. Where would you like to be dropped? Where are you headed? I have a few scores to settle on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you fought for money, why not revenge? I'm for the ride. Right? <laughs> not like that. Yeah, them biker dudes gotta get it. They have to. Mm -mm. Check your six, homie. Yeah, I mean. One debt done. It's such an odd looking ship. But it's so legendary. Ah, the Sarlacc pit. He came back. <laughs> he got a score to sell with the Sarlacc. Well, you can't be mad at the Sarlacc. I mean, it literally is just sitting there. It does what it does. Huh. Staring into them to the mouth of the beast. Whoa! That actually got me a little bit. <laughs> Why are you struggling to reach it? Just, just reach it. That'll do it. Poor little Sarlacc. He was just chilling, minding his own business. If I'm gonna start a house, I need brains and muscle. You have both. 
But I'm an independent contractor. I can offer you something no client ever has. Loyalty. Hmm. And pledge my life to protect yours. I feel Living that. with the Tuscans has made you soft. Ah! <laughs> Perhaps. No, it's made me strong. You can only get so far without a tribe. Hmm. Show ass out of my seat. <laughs> Back at the casino again. That's who you need to recruit. <laughs> he look like he can't wait to rob him. <laughs> so you gotta be careful how much you floss. Cause somebody's always watching. Mm. Release this customer and let these fine folks get back to their fun. And in return, I will wipe your debt off the books. Mm. Yeah. He's like, nah, I still need this arm. <laughs> Nobody want to hear all that. And he paid his bill. <laughs> you need to sign him up to your squad with your lacking team. Looks like you could use a job. <laughs> there we go. Why do you deserve to be the daimyo? What prevents us all from killing you and taking what we want? Hmm. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you sit on top of a trap door. <laughs> they have only challenged your territory. Why should we spill the blood of our ranks for a feud waged between you and the Pikes? That's a good question. Then I will fight these battles alone. I will vanquish these interlopers who threaten our planet. I will make the streets safe again, so all in this room can prosper. All I ask in return is that you remain neutral if the Pike Syndicate approaches you to betray me. Dang, he said I'll do all the work. I abide. Okay. Respect! Don't ask of, uh, what is it? Uh, don't ask people to do what you aren't willing to do yourself as a leader, right? We must prepare for war. How much treasure do we have in reserve? I have plenty of credits. What I'm short on is muscle. Yes! Credits can buy muscle. If you know where to look. Okay. Ah! Yo, you heard the tune in the back! Doom doom! Yo, let's get some Mando up in here. <laughs> Yo, that was a great little plug. All right, like always, I always like looking at the channel art. I mean, not the channel art, but the um, uh, the storyboard art. It's a guy, nice little recap. Yeah. Ming Nan Wen, y'all. Mwah. There was a lot in this particular episode. Now that I'm sitting here looking at some of the storyboards. Yo, they always do a good job with the music. All right, so that concludes episode four. Yo, off the top of my head, it seems like the pace is starting to pick up a little bit. The first three episodes is doing a really good job of building some backstory, getting you a good idea as to Boba Fett's why. Why is he doing all of this? And then justifying some of his actions based off of some of the trials and tribulations that he's been through, which we saw with uh, with the Sand People. It's kind of terrible what happened with the Sand People, but we got a chance to get grounded in family and structure and discipline and honoring like the culture 
itself. The actor who plays Boba Fett is of Maui descent uh, from New Zealand. And it's pretty interesting to me that the stick that he uses with that, that bulb with the with the spike at the end of it, uh, that is an actual weapon that, that the Maui tribe has has used before. And it's cool that you get a chance to see him like bring that into, into the Star Wars universe and into the culture. And I think we got a chance to see that be shaped and molded in episode two, if I remember right, when he was actually forging his own his own weapon. But it's those little things that show and bring honor to a disreputable, dishonorable type of profession, which is bounty hunting, and being used by other people for their own nefarious rays, and then him like coming to realize that he can't he just got done living in a place where he was loved and became a part of a community. And now he kind of like wants that back. So he's gonna build his own family and his own tribe. So I do like those elements of it. I think where some of the spots where kind of like Boba Fett kind of like kind of stalls is that the pacing can just seem a little bit slower than what we maybe used to with Star Wars properties. The Mandalorian was a bit of an adjustment. In hindsight, when it first came out, it was a little bit slow as well because it's got that Western kind of feel, but we grew to love it. This one, which has more of a Godfather-ish kind of feel, seems a little bit slower as well. It's like Disney's really just slowing down the pace and just telling some really good storytelling. I think sometimes it can fall a little bit short with some of the production value that you see, uh, whereas like some of the stunts aren't, aren't as crisp and clean. You know, we had a couple of jokes regarding uh, some of the car chase scenes and stuff that could have been a little bit more tighter, a little bit more crisp. There's elements of it at times where it can feel like a CW kind of kind of project. And what I mean by CW is it's a network that that shows DC properties such as uh, The Flash, Green Arrow, and 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 Supergirl and stuff. And it's really like YA. It's really like a really like young adult type of show. And the production quality is a little bit lacking, but you're still in it for the good times and a lot of good fun. This kind of feels like that at times. It doesn't have like the, the polish that you would really want. But the overall arching story that's being told is interesting. You're getting a chance to see like some world building and, and somebody become the next kingpin per se of the Star Wars universe and that's gonna take time. They are addressing some of the gripes that I had previously. My biggest one regarding like how are you supposed to be like this big kingpin and this gangster and you don't really have any crew. It just seemed unrealistic that you can control that many people with such a shortcoming of staff. But they are addressing it bit by bit. They're addressing the fact that you know his age may play a big part of it as well because the actor who's playing this as we've said before he's like in his 60s. He's doing a very good job. This is a hat tip to him because I can't even imagine being able to do the things that he can do at that age. I was curious. I'm like, well, how does that kind of like blend and mold into the Star Wars universe as far as Boba Fett's tale? It's like, is he going to play that part? So you get a chance to see like the, the chamber, which I call it like the hyperbolic chamber, which was what was rumored. Michael Jackson was sleeping in in order to remain to maintain his youth in order to help his inability to sleep. Well, anyways, he's sleeping in this thing that is slowly restoring his body and you get a chance to see in a very cool and justifiable approach as to why he has such so much wear and tear on his body as you get a chance to see him grow through all of his trials and tribulations of being with the sand people being eaten in the sarlacc pit and and, and all of that live just living in the desert just beat his body up and now he's been restoring it slowly over these past few episodes so it's not so much of a running joke as it used to be it just it kind of like makes sense and now that he's out of that maybe we get to see him like in his full form. There's, there's also great things that you get to see regarding how he's building his family. And he's doing it through A, through love, respect, and leading through example. Even when it came to the creature that's in the pit <laughs> in, in Boba Fett's old whole hideout, there's no episode of him like bonding with the creature and showing respect. You saw it when he was letting the Bonta go and he was like, you know, you've served me well, girl, but now it's time for you to kind of like do your own thing. You know, he's an animal lover, unless you're a Sarlacc and then, you know, we don't care about them Sarlaccs. <laughs> if there is a Star Wars version of PETA, they would be calling it in. Because the poor thing just lives there. It's not like it roams the desert looking for trouble. It just chills and people drop, you know, other human beings in his mouth and feed him. But, you know, he got murks nonetheless. But, you know, I guess if you're going to half digest me, I'm going to feel some kind of way about it as well. They also address the fact that his armor was gone, which we get to see uh, in The Mandalorian. <laughs> Timothy Oliphant uh, rocking it. A little bit of a spoiler uh, if you haven't seen uh 
the Mandalorian. So they are doing a really good job of like, you know, crossing their T's and dotting their I's and addressing some of the previous issues that they had before. I still have a lot of faith in it. It's still not better than the Mandalorian just yet, but it's proving itself. It's not a bad series by any means, and I'm still fully invested. And I think that Robert Rodriguez, the person who is written and directed a lot of these episodes, who's also one of uh, the producers on the show, is doing a really good job flexing. John Favre obviously has a lot of uh, has a lot of faith in him, and we've seen what John Favre has been able to do when he has a lot of creative control. Hence the Mandalorian, hence the Marvel Universe, a lot of parts in the Marvel Universe with Iron Man. You know, he gets the job done. So I hope you're still aboard. Like I'm still on board. I'm gonna go ahead and shut up because I've been just rambling for a while. But this was episode four. Ew, thank you for hanging out. This is your boy Sintel with the Intel. If you like this dialogue and you want to be a part of it when it happens, you know, make sure you click that alert button and of course that subscription. The bell icon is what we're talking about. Those thumbs up let YouTube know that you know you love hanging out with me and it helps like move me up the uh, move me up the tiers a little bit. So please, you know, click all the associated buttons and hang out with me a little bit later. It's your boy Sintel, and I'll catch you later. Peace out.